All right, we've got um, only a few minutes left, and there's, oh my gosh, so many theists. Okay, uh, this is Andrew in Rhode Island who says he has evidence for the existence of God. Hello. Hey, welcome to the show. You're on with Matt and John. Hi. Um, I just wanted to know why you don't believe a God exists. Because um, I... Wow, okay, so the, the thing here says you have evidence for the existence of God, and the answer to your question, why, why don't you believe God exists, John? Because I don't have ev evidence. Yeah, my, my, my explanation is pretty much the same. Uh, the claim that some God exists has, as far as I've been able to tell, not met its burden of proof. Okay, can I present an argument? Well, sure. Okay. Okay, um, premise one. It's possible that a maximally great being exists. So we're going with the two. I've okay. heard I've heard this yes. one before. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Premise two: a maximally great being exists in some possible world. Premise three: if a maximally great being exists in some possible world, then it exists in every possible world. If a maximally great being exists in every possible world, then it exists in the actual world. A maximally great being exists in the actual world, therefore a maximally great being sure, this is, exists. Sure, this is the modologic version of the ontological argument. Correct. Okay. Um, define maximally great. Um, having every possible quality. Okay, the, so like, evil? Uh, right, so... I mean, a sadistic. What's the question? So, so what you know, a, a quality of something could be its sadistic nature. So it could be maximally sadistic. Right. I, I guess those things aren't great then. Oh, oh. So why are we concerned about a maximally great being? Why wouldn't Why wouldn't we start with a maximally awful being? Well, well you could, but then. Um, you couldn't you couldn't justify uh, premise three because so premise three is if it exists in one world it exists in every world. Yeah. That so if it, if it wasn't maximally great, then it wouldn't have. Okay. Well, then it, why why okay. is something great possible in every world, but something awful isn't? Well, because it, it's greater to exist than not to exist. But I, no, 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 no. You don't just get to assume that it's greater to exist than not to exist. Plus, you're also equivocating on the word great. Because right. when I was talking about something awful existing, you know, something just despicable and vile, um, yeah. then you're, you aren't willing. So if you start off with great as in if it's a moral good thing. And then you shift great as into, oh, this is better. And, oh, it's better to exist than not to exist. How did you conclude that? And wouldn't it be even better, like even in that definition of greatness, for a being to not exist and yet make people think that it exists? Well, I don't think that's logically possible. Well, okay. So it's, it's bound on modal logic. Right? Yeah, so and, and so first of all, I reject the idea that because we can create a definition of something that seems possible in some possible world, that it then becomes yeah. possible in every world, and then it becomes, it basically, we're, the, all versions of the ontological argument try to define a God into existence. And, and most of them will... Well, it's in, just in, a most of, argument. Most of them so will... I, well, most of them... Most, Andrew, most... I'm in a exist. sentence. Can, can I go with my sentence now? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Sure. Most of them include this this idea that that God is somehow necessary, um, which is which yeah. goes down a different track. So your question was, is it better to exist than to not exist? Um, yeah. Well, that very much depends. Uh, I'm happier that I exist than that I don't, and ha happiness is certainly a good thing. I would prefer to exist rather than not exist, but. If my existence is in fact awful, if I am in constant pain and agony um, with no hope of recovery, then I think an argument can be made that it would be better for me not to exist than to exist, which is why I support death with dignity and people's right to decide yeah. when to end their life. Would, wouldn't it be greater to not feel pain rather than to feel pain? Sure. But see, okay, so, so, there you, so, go. so you, you, 
you, this whole thing hinges on whether or not it's possible for a maximally great being to exist. And this is just an unfounded assertion as a first premise. Well, no, not really. Yes, no, it, yes, it, really. It, what? It, it, Read the first premise. It's possible that a maximally great being exists. Okay. What evidence do you have that it is possible for a maximally great being to exist? Well, I mean, we can. We probably have different views of, you know, probability, but I would say things that aren't impossible. I, sorry, I would say things that aren't logically impossible exist in some possible world. Okay, that's absolute garbage. Possibility must be right. demonstrated, and a mere inability to demonstrate that something is impossible does not make it possible. Okay, but it may, wouldn't you say the premise is more probable than not? Then no. How do you calculate? If, if we can't get to whether or not it's even possible, how could you possibly begin to calculate probability? Well, okay, if there's nothing logically impossible about the notion, then I, then so I would what? Say that, that doesn't all. No, no, no. The inability to demonstrate that it is logically impossible does not mean that it is possible. Right. So the inability to can you repeat that? The inability to demonstrate that X is impossible does right. not mean that X is possible. Okay, so what would you say is possible then? Whatever has been demonstrated to be possible. Okay, what does that mean? Be de isn't, isn't po I mean, if something has already been demonstrated to exist, then we don't need to consider it possible because it exists. So, I mean, it's like you're defining so you're possible things out of existence. So you're confusing two different definitions of possible. All right, that's why I started by opening. I think we have different views on what that means, so yeah. maybe we could establish that. Well, your, your opening premise is it's possible for a maximally great being to exist. Right. And I'm yeah. saying I do not accept that that is true. How would you demonstrate that? Yeah. And your response well, I, is that you can't on, show okay. that it's wrong. Well, no, it, it's, if, if something isn't impossible, then it's possible. Do you disagree no. with that? Yes, I that absolutely that? disagree okay. with that. That's exactly what okay. I was just saying. Okay, so how do we determine if something's possible? Possibility is a demonstration. You have to show that whatever... What whatever that can I finish my fucking sentence that will tell you what it means? Yeah, sure. You begin with what you understand about reality. Okay? Okay. And you demonstrate that certain things are possible within reality by showing either that they have occurred or that the laws of reality lead to the inevitable conclusion that they are that they can occur. For example, it may never be the case that someone has named their child Fergal Burgle Minergal Burgle. But because we understand that this is a, a, a label that someone like me could utter, and that I have the freedom, if I so choose, to name a child Fergal Burgle Minergal Burgle, then we have demonstrated that it is possible to name a child Fergal Burgle Minergal Burgle. Even though, right, there's, even there's, though there's we don't know, there's a difference between okay, sorry. Even there's though there's a difference between putting labels on things and, and talking about if that thing actually exists. Sure, I have never driven a Ferrari, but it okay. is possible, epistemically possible, which is one of the parts of confusion, for me to drive a Ferrari. The right, only, the only you're thing you're talking about an action, not something actually existing. I think. I, Okay. I think you're equivocating them. You asked me about possibility. Okay. I can't tell you. So, for example, nobody's ever built, that we're aware of, a, right. any sort of device that can travel fa travel faster than the speed of light carrying a, a, a human being. Okay. Is it possible? I don't know. I don't either. Is it impossible? I don't know. I don't either. And so now we're in the position where we live in a universe. We understand that there are things that potentially travel at the speed of light. Uh, we understand that there may be things that uh, it may be impossible for anything to travel faster than the speed of light, but we can't demonstrate that impossibility. And so we are in a, stuck in a position where we have no idea whether or not this is possible or impossible. And I'm in the exact same position when it comes to the idea that there is a maximally great being, or that there possibly could be a maximally great being. But your position is, hey, it's possible that there's a maximally great being because nobody's shown that it's impossible. And I'm saying that's not well, how you determine possible. I don't care. It doesn't, I, there's nothing logically impossible about a unicorn. Right. 
Right, and I would say a unicorn exists in some possible world. That's There you go. Okay, and I don't give a shit about some possible world. I care about the actual world. And that's what the rest of the premises demonstrate. Okay, I'm not saying... So, okay, it's possible that a, universe, that a unicorn exists. Yes. Uh, does that mean it exists? It, it exists in some possible world, right? Is right. what you're saying. It doesn't exist in our world because it's not, it doesn't have the quality of being maximally great. If it did, then it would ah. be God. So is it possible that there's a maximally great unicorn? Mm, no. How do you no. know that? Why? Is it possible that there's a maximally... Oh, okay, what so, does that mean? So, I, I said... I hey, said the you're, the one, you're the one that's calling in to, to present this particular well, well, argument, but, here, but here, I will... Andrew, right? stop. We are, okay, sorry, we are completely out of time. I'm going to make this simple. A maximally great I, being... I can answer the question. No, no, no. Let me finish. How hard is that? Okay. Uh, there's a delay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Here's a maximally great being... And here's a maximally great being that is also a unicorn. Isn't the maximally great being that is also a unicorn greater than the maximally great being? No, because it, it, by call, okay, well, I, I mean, I understand. It depends what you mean by a unicorn, right? But it, by but labeling a unicorn, you're putting restrictions on it. You're putting limitations. No, on it. if you're going to say no. it's a unicorn, but there's no limitations, then it's then it's God. It's just not a unicorn anymore. Okay, yeah, by putting by putting the label God on it, you're putting restrictions on it, which means that you're saying it can't possibly be a unicorn, which now means that there's something that God can't be. No, I, I never. You said have that. you I have just limited that. God. God is incapable of being I, a unicorn. I, I, no, because. God's maximally great, and a unicorn isn't. And if a unicorn, how do you know is, a unicorn, unicorn isn't maximally great? Have you ever investigated a unicorn to find out if it's maximally well, I just, great? I just told you having every possible maximally great quality would make that unicorn God. So it, either, I'm not. I'm not denying, it. Andrew. I didn't deny that the unicorn, the maximally great unicorn, would be God. I'm saying that the maximally great unicorn would be God and a unicorn, and you're saying that that's not possible because that puts a limitation on it. Well, no, well, it depends what you mean by calling it a unicorn. If you mean it, I, I it mean that be. it is a horse object with a co a horn uh, that really likes virgins. It, can it be something else other than that as well? I, do, I don't know whether it can be or not. I don't see any reason why it couldn't be. Okay, then then it, it's a god, and my, my god just has the possibility sure. of, of becoming that. Okay? And, and I don't have. I, I understand, world, Andrew. Which means it exists in our possible. Okay, first of all, I don't have any reason to think that a maximally great unicorn god uh, exists any more than I do that a maximally great god does. Uh, and also, I don't, and also, and also, I don't agree that because you can come up with something that might exist or that does exist in some possible world, that this means that it necessarily exists in all worlds. Uh, I, okay, well, I, I reject then you're disputing the third premise. Yes, I, I'm, I've rejected pretty much every premise of this, and my problem with the modal logic versions is because I have an objection to S5, that you can say something, hey, this necessarily exists because we can define it in such a way that it exists in the possible world. There's a reason why I'm not a fan of the ontological argument. And by the way, and I will close on this because we are completely out of time, we've even gone over time, how okay. sad is it? that people who are convinced that there is a God who loves and cares about us, who sent his son to die for us, this is in fact God, and I know that this isn't the purpose of the ontological argument, but how sad is it that the best argument they can give is a convoluted piece of philosophical garbage that less than half of a percent of the people who have ever lived have any hope of understanding it. If there is a God, it should be evident demonstrated by actual evidence. Otherwise, these people are either claiming, claiming to detect that which is undetectable, or instead, which I find even more repugnant, trying to construct an obfuscated argument that argues for the undetectable.